you'll indulge us, we have one more tale to tell. A coda, if you will. It happened that one night, Zeus, the lord of the heavens, and Hermes, the messenger, came down to earth to see what people were really like. They disguised themselves as two old beggars. They were ragged and poor, and stinky and filthy. They knocked on a thousand doors. Hello, do you have any spare Get out of here, get the hell out of here. I work hard for my money. And a thousand doors were slammed on them. Hello, we're tired. We live on the street. We were just wondering if you might. I'm sorry, I just can't right now. I'm, I'm really sorry, I just can't. At last, they came to a little hut on the outskirts of town. Why bother knocking here? We've knocked in the houses of people who have plenty to give. Whoever lives here obviously has nothing for us. Let's give the trial all the same. We've come all this way. This is useless. Let's just go home. Poor strangers, film on their guests at our door. Hello, we're strangers to these parts. We've lost our way. Bowsis, why are you standing there? We must bring our guests inside. Do you know us? Of course. You do? Yes. Then who are we? Why, you are children of God. Please come in. The two of us, satisfied that their disguises had not been seen through, entered the house, lowering their heads to fit through the door. No, don't sell the floor. Sit on chairs as tall as you can Philemon ran to get another chair, and Bowsis fetched two pieces of cloth and pad them, so that the strangers might rest easy. She stirred the coals in the heart, and fanned the fire to keep them a Philemon brought out the embroidered cloth that they saved for feast days. Bowsis saw that one of the legs of the chair was short, so she propped it up with a shard of a pot. Philemon set out a plate of olives, green ones in black, and a saucer of cherry plums. Then there was cabbage and some roasted eggs. For dessert, there were nuts, figs, dates, and plums. And a basket of ripe apples. Do you remember how apples smell? At last, with a show of modest pride, the two brought out a bit of honeycomb for sweetness. Philemon began to pour wine from a bottle, but as he filled the glasses of the two guests, he saw that the bottle remained full. And, and then they knew. Oh, mercy, mercy. Why, you are divine, and we have served you such a simple meal. Bowsis, go and kill the goose. Let it live. We are gods, and we thank you. You've done enough, much more than your nasty neighbors thought to do. <laughs> Suddenly, everything was changed. The poor little house, their simple cottage, was becoming grander and grander into a glittering, marble column temple. The straw in the reeds of the thatched roof metamorphosed into gold, and gates with elaborate carving sprang up as ground gave way to marble paving stones. Old man, old woman, ask me what you will. You shall grant whatever you request. Having spent all our lives together, we ask that you allow us to die at the same moment. I would hate to see my wife's grave or have her weep at mine. The gods granted their wish. Arrived at a very old age together, the two stood in what had once been their modest doorway, and now was a grandiose facade. And Bowsis noticed her husband was beginning to put forth leaves, and he too saw that she was producing leaves and bark. They were turning into trees. They stood there, held each other, and called before the bark closed over their mouths. Farewell. Walking down the street at night, when you're all alone, you can still hear, stirring in the intermingled branches, the ardent prayer of Bowsus and Philip. They whispered, let me die the moment my love dies. They whispered, Let me not outlive my own capacity to love. They whispered, Let me die still loving, and so never die. 